What's up everybody? Jacob here with Smetic Performance. Today we're working on Jason Mosner's 406 custom engine. You'll have to kind of excuse all the wires. We've got the timing light, poly sniper, and these are just our dyno valve covers. They're not the actual valve covers that'll go on the engine once it's off the dyno. We keep these on here so in case uh, some things rattle against them or they get a little dirty. But anyways, this started life as our 406 eliminator engine and then Jason wanted to turn it up a little bit. So it has a custom set of 10 and a half to one compression JE forged pistons with a really slick plateau hone job to really help the ring seal up and break in quickly. Next, we did a smetting custom cam. It's 242, 250 duration at 50 thousandths, about mid 500s lift on a 110 lobe separation angle. It has AFR CNC'd 195 heads and a Holly strip dominator single plane, all being controlled by Holly Sniper EFI. These systems are super nice. I love working with them. Brendan is just about finished up getting everything ready to go so we can run this beast on the dyno. I'm gonna flash a quick tune into the Sniper. That should be really close to this combination and we'll get it fired up. A little pro tip for guys trying to fire up old school distributor engines for the first time. If you leave the fuel system turned off, whether if it's EFI, leave it turned off. It's, if it's a carburetor, don't put fuel into it yet. You can actually turn on your whole ignition system. And if you have a nice timing light, and when I say nice, we literally have just a very simple, robust, it works great. You can actually time your distributor and set your initial timing with the engine turned off. So we just have a bump button clicker. We're gonna hold the clicker, rotate the engine over, set our initial timing, lock down the distributor, and then we'll turn back on the Holly Sniper, and then it'll immediately start, and it makes your first startup that much easier. So we'll turn our timing up a little bit. Okay, the engine's all hooked up on the dyno, initial timing is set, I have a tune loaded up into the Holly Sniper. So, there it goes, just like that. Starts up immediately, oil pressure comes in. These systems really are just that easy. They're great little kits. Because this engine has a hydraulic roller valve train, we don't have to do the really fast RPM camshaft break-in like you would need to with a flat crappit camshaft. Um, so we're gonna let the engine fully warm up at a nice idle. This is a forged piston motor. It's good to let these warm up before you rev them so the pistons can expand and set their bore clearance. Once everything is warmed up, we'll reconfirm our initial timing, uh, check the idle tune up just a little bit uh, and go from there. Now that we're warmed up to 160, oil pressure solid, of course. We're gonna go in there, confirm our initial timing um, sometimes when everything warms up and moves around, the distributor can rotate just a degree or two. So we're going to go confirm it. And after that, we'll start making pulls. Right now I have 34 degrees total timing in this engine. Um, it does have a really efficient AFR cylinder head and it's a little more compression than we normally run. It's 10 and a half to one. Our normal 383s and the normal 406 is 10 to one. So we're going to start at 34. After the third pull, the motor will be about done breaking in the rings and making more power. So we'll have a good baseline and then we'll add some timing and really refine the combination. For this first pull, we're going to go from 28 to 6,000. Should be a good starting point for the torque curve. Ignore these. They're not hooked up because the Holly is running it as well as the fuel pressure. It's not accurate. Okay, first pull, we made 532 horsepower and it looks like, what is that, 516 torque. Um, Tune-up's gonna come in a little better and we should pick up a bunch of mid-range right through here. And you can see we were just about plateaued on the horsepower. So on the next pull, we'll probably start it at 3000. You can see the dyno was kind of weird releasing it down low with this camshaft profile on the heads. 
So we'll go from 3,000 and we'll stretch it out to 6,200 on the second pool and start dialing everything in. Okay, now we're gonna make our second pool. for this motor you can see now that we have a nice smooth torque curve that follows the camshaft profile um, now that the tune-up is coming in and the engine is breaking in a lot better look at the how much power we gained so the blue line is the first pull we made the red line is the second you can see this is all from the tune-up getting a lot closer and better but across the board we made more power everywhere again part of that's from the tune-up in the sniper it is a self-tuning unit second the piston rings are breaking in so we're going to leave the torque we're going to leave the lower and upper rpms for the pool the same here we'll make another three pools total so we'll have five runs on the motor and then we'll add some timing and see what she likes If I overlay the third run with the second run, you'll see that the lines are starting to crisscross now. Um, it's still generally going to pick up more. You can see the torque curve at peak torque is getting better. Um, it might have overcompensated from the second run a little here and made a little less torque, but overall, it's starting to repeat itself. So we'll keep leaning on it here and we'll go from there. Okay, this is pool number four. straight to pool number five. Here's our fifth pool. So this is about as much power as we're gonna make on 34 degrees of total timing. So we'll feed in two degrees, set it at 36, and see if it picks up. Okay, so here's the comparison between the 36 and 34 degrees. The red line is 36, and you can see that we made more power and torque everywhere. Right at peak torque, however, we didn't make any more power. Um, that's mainly because cylinder pressure is that, that is when cylinder pressure is at its highest point. However, below torque and after peak torque, cylinder pressure is lower, and that's when the lower pressure likes the more timing. So because it didn't change right here at all, we're gonna leave it at 36 degrees. I'm happy with that number and that curve by itself uh, looks something like this. So about a little over 550 horsepower, about 530-ish torque. Really nice little package. <laughs> 